Hi. All right, as you guys heard, this is a recorded class, which is great news because it means you can watch a replay and follow along um, to create more bracelets later. And um, this class is, it's beginner friendly, but I always recommend for especially new beaters that um, if you're new to beating and you wanna just watch through one time um, and then make along with the replay when you can pause it, um, we've had better luck with that because uh, I start going too fast and then, um, you know, it's hard to keep up with, uh, we're trying to cram so much content into just one hour. So um, recommend watching the replay for make along. And um, again, this class is recorded. The replay will be on michaels.com slash classes. And the best way to find it is to um, scroll down to the, they have these bubbles now for the different types of craft and click on beads and jewelry. And you will see um, in the order of most recent, all of the recorded classes that are available. Okay, and so um, today is the um, Super Duo Wave Bracelet. And this is a really fun project that can be done with a lot of different kinds of beads. Um, gemstone rondelles, faceted glass beads, you, you name it, anything that you like to work with. The size that I've used for this design is six millimeter and all of the components I'm going to show you are in the handout. And if you have any questions as we're going through the content and the materials and making a lawn, um, you can drop them in the chat and I'll try to answer them. And so I'm going to go ahead and switch down to my other camera so I can show you all the materials. So uh, starting with the rondelle beads. So the rondelle beads you can get quite a few of these, um, you know, on the, the strong wall. And the six millimeter size is available in lots of different formats, but I wanted to highlight one of them. Um, there are currently on the, the strand wall at Michael's a bunch of these strands. And they come with different size rondelle beads. Today's class is only going to use the six millimeter off of the strand. But I wanted to highlight that next week's class, the earrings class, uses these beads. And then on uh, what I think is the 20th, Sarah Ellis is doing a class that uses these. So one strand could get you through three classes. And I just wanted to point that out because right now they have, I think, at least over a dozen colors or more of these style of strands. And they're perfect for all of these upcoming classes. Um, what I'm going to use today for the demo is going to be these. I'm going to pull the six millimeter strand off of that one and use it because we found that red looks really good for the camera. And then Super Duo beads. So the Super Duos um, come in a lot of different colors. Um, I'm going to work with just one color, but um, you could work a sample with, you know, more than one color inside of the um, design. So, for example, you could put three Super Duo colors on there and it will look really cool. So just go ahead and play with that and design away, come up with good stuff. And then you'll need some size eight seed beads. You'll also need some size tens. Um, and of course, 11s, if, you've, if you prefer to use 11s, try them. And you may need to add a bead here and there um, to the count, uh, especially um, this part where we're crossing over. Maybe do five instead of four and I'll I'll point that out when we get there. And so to put it all together, we're gonna to be using the wildfire. This is the 0.006 size. And I'm gonna be stitching with size 10 beading needles. And then uh, when we create the endings, we're gonna be using the wire guardians that are shown here. And then last but not least, scissors to cut the thread. And then right at the end, I will pull in some chain nose pliers, probably some vent nose pliers as well, and a findings pack so that um, we can attach clasps to the end of our bracelet. All right. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I wanted to give you guys a heads up that um, I have some tips and tricks that I've discovered because I've been making a bunch of these uh, recently. And, you know, when I create these handouts, Occasionally I create them literally months in advance from, from classes. And so um, I get new ideas. And so I have some new tips and tricks that aren't on the handout. You might wanna jot those down 
um, as we go through. Okay, so what I just did is I removed the six millimeter strand from this little gem pack here. And I'm gonna save these for next week. Next week we're doing the earrings with those and then save these for the week after that for Sarah's class. Okay. The bracelet samples that I made um, use 24 of these beads. You can adjust that, use more or less um, based on the length that you're going for. If you're making these to sell, you know, for your business, I would suggest making it with 24 beads, which is um, on the smaller side, but then get a findings pack, add a lobster claw and use the jump rings to make a chain. Or you, alternatively, you could buy a chain, an extender chain. That takes a bracelet and makes it marketable to any buyer. And you don't have to worry about what wrist size. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, so getting the thread here. And the handout says to cut 60 inches. That's the minimum that you want to cut for a bracelet that uses 24 beads. Today I'm going to add a little more and I'm going to do that because I discovered a stabilizing trick that uses a little bit of thread. So I might cut as much as 75 inches. And using scissors, I misplaced them. There we go. And so um, I'm going to grab a pair of chain nose pliers really quick to flatten the end of my thread. Here's those. And what I'm doing here is I'm flattening the end of the wildfire, not pulling, just flattening it so that it will go through the needle, the eye of the needle a little easier. And again, this is a, a size 10 beading needle. There we go. And then the handout, it says to fold it down seven inches. So run the, run the needle down your strand and fold it over at about seven inches. You can just eyeball that. Okay, now I'm gonna need to get my size eight beads out. And so another tip that's not in the handout that might help as you're getting started leaving about a 15 inch tail that we will use as our weaving in tail later. Um, you can make a stop bead by going back through that first eight. In the handout, it says to start stringing them and it doesn't mention a stop bead, but I found that it actually helps a little bit. And we'll have to remove it later when we finish this end, but just for now, just to keep it from sliding off, I'll put that on there. And then go ahead and just start stringing. Rondelle, eight, Rondell, eight, until you have about 24 rondelles or a length, um, the length that you'd like it to be. I'm gonna do just a few more. I may not do a full length one here today because I wanna be able to um, get to, maybe, maybe have a chance to finish another one or start another one just in case. So make it about that long. And so now I'm gonna get a wire guardian. I'm gonna add one more size eight. Some of those wire guardians that I showed you guys earlier, they come in a pack with quite a few of them. Now you're going to need to get the size tens out. Okay, so exiting from that last eight we added here, I'm going to pick up one ten and go through the wire guardian. So start from the side that has an open, you know, the uh, the side that's got the open side and then come around the well of the wire guardian 
Tá? Pick up another 10 and then go down through the 8 and the first rondel bead. Okay, and so we're not going to reinforce that yet. Um, in, in the handout, it, it explains we're going to stitch down, create this ending, and then come back up. And when we come back up, we're going to reinforce that and weave in up here. So for now, it's just going to have one pass. I wanted to highlight that we'll come back that, to that later and fix that. Super duo time. And so the next step is to pick up three super duo beads. And um, I did get that question earlier. Um, I was going to go into a, a little more detail about it at the end, but someone had asked, can I use a different size rondelle bead? And I, I believe that will work. And I have, I have one that's the same size um, as the next larger, I think it's an eight millimeter rondelle. Um, try it with four. So at this step, we're adding three. Try it with four and see if that looks better, but you'll have to play with it a little bit and play with the counts of the tens to see, um, you know, that way. But I do think it will work really nicely. All right, so I'm coming down in the other direction through the rondel. So I exited this side, added three super duos, and I'm going to turn and go through the rondel again. And then also pass through the next eight in the next rondel bead. So the first set will sit on the side in a little fan. And then just same thing again. I'm gonna pick up three more. And again, going back through the rondel bead. And this time, I'm gonna show you a little tip that I found helped me on. If this was one of the really long ones, what I was finding happening was sometimes these were just getting a little loose. And until you do step the next step that, um, you know, locks them into place, they move around a lot. And um, I was having too much thread. So one thing you can do to solve that, if that's happening to you, after you pull the first super duos around the rondelle, go ahead and go back through them again. So now I'm just going back through. And you won't have to do this on every one. If you do it every third, a really stabilized piece as you're working. And again, that wasn't in the handout. So if you wanted to scribble that as a note for later, um, added that, just going through it one more time. And now all that wiggle is gone. So all that movement that we had before is a lot better. There we go. And I'm going to pick up three more. And oh, I forgot when I when I exited from that rondelle that second time, I went through the eight and I went through the next rondelle. And um, this time I'm going to go through the next eight and the next rondelle as well. You'll notice that I'm kind of, I'm intending it to sit one side versus the other. Don't worry too much about that if they flip. They're going to flip as you start working anyway. But um, when we reach the next step where we lock them together, they won't do that anymore and you'll have the opportunity to line them up again. So again, you know, you can encourage them to sit this way, but don't worry too much if they don't. Okay, and I've got three more, three more super duos coming around, going back through the rondelle bead here. And then I'm going to continue through the eight, through the next rondelle. And do that again. Three more. Going through. And so I'm starting to get some loose connection here. So might be time to do another uh, reinforce. So I'm gonna go back through the ones I just added. And I'm going through the bottom, the bottom holes of those. Oops. One 
second. I'm going to go back up there. Actually, I think I'll just do it on this one. I was going to reinforce that one, but I didn't remember that I'd gone through these two already. So I'm going to pick up three more here. We'll have this one be the one I reinforce. There we go. Okay. I'm looping around and going through that one. Just going through the rondelle this time because I want to go through it twice. So I tighten that. And back through all those again. And this is optional, this step here that I'm doing just makes it easier, I think. If everything's just a little tighter. There we go. Go through. Now I went through the eight in the next rondo. Okay. And same thing again, just picking up three, going through the rondelle, the next eight, and the rondelle. I'm going to do that two more times. And I'm just encouraging it to sit one on the other side from the previous. Um, but again, you don't have to worry too much about that. It does look cool. Three more. And I'm at the last one. Okay. And so now I'm here at the end of my strand. And it's over here, you guys can see it. And I remember I made that, that a stop bead. I need that to not be a stop bead anymore. So I'm gonna pull it off. And here's a chance to tighten and pull these apart. So one extra step there. Pick up three more super duos. Coming around that last rondelle, going through it. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up an eight, a 10, and another wire guardian. Okay. And going through the bottom there, loop around. If you're not using wire guardians, make a loop with C beads with the size tens using either four or six. Six will be easier to get um, a jump ring through. I'm um, picking up another 10. Go through just the eight. So don't go through that 10 there, just go through the eight. And then continue through the first rondelle bead. Okay, so there's what I've done there. I've got this tail thread here. At the end, I'm gonna use it to reinforce this side. So right now we've just got one pass through here and we're not worrying about it just yet. We'll be back. I'm gonna go through the bottom hole of the super duo that is around this first rondelle here. We're making a turn right now. I'm gonna go through the next two. If it'll let me go through, yeah, there we go. You may have to go through them one at a time if, if they're tight. Okay, and now I wanna be able to go this way. I'm going this way. I wanna go that way. So I have a, a second hole in the super duo. So I'm gonna turn and go through that second hole. So again, what we did was we went through our rondelle and we made a turn and I went through these three bottom holes. Now I'm making a turn in this direction, going through the top hole of that super duo. Now we're right where we wanna be. We'll pick up an eight and go to the top hole of the next one. And I do that one more time with another eight. Okay, and now we're gonna need four size 10 beads. And if you're working with a larger rondelle and you added more um, super duos, you would have needed to do three you know, repeats of that size eight instead of two. And now where we're adding four, you might wanna add five or six. 
play with it and see. I'm going to make a, a sample after class and post it with a larger bead and I will share those counts at that time. But I hadn't had a chance to play with it just yet, so I'm not sure what those counts are exactly. But my guess is that it'll be um, uh, probably five or six tens to skip over an eight millimeter rondo. Here with our six millimeter ones, we're doing four size tens. And then what I did is I went through the top hole of the Super Duo on the other side here of this rondo. So there's just four beads. Now I'm picking up an eight and doing the same thing here where we go through the top hole, the next bead, the next Super Duo bead. Um, pick up another eight and go through the next one. Okay, same thing, four more size tens and crossing over with them. Going through the top hole over here. I'm gonna keep going that way, picking up another eight and another eight. And notice every time you tighten and add the next set, it pulls the super duos up. Look at that um, over a little bit so you guys can see it better. Um, let me go this way. And uh, maybe even showing you on the other side what I mean. See how it's kind of hugging the bead now? It's just kind of turned upwards, it's shaping it. Every time you add that, that will happen. And so four, um, sorry, uh, yeah, four more here. That's where I'm at. Okay. And skipping from the top hole of this super duo all the way over here to the top hole of the next one. And I've still got my tail thread. So I sometimes I'm coming back and I'm pulling on it just to give a little more attention to my stitches. Going with an eight through the top hole of the next one. I'm gonna speed up just a little bit. Another eight and then four more tens. Skipping over the work here and going through the top hole of the next super duo. And that really is the cool thing about super duos is they give you this ability to go to go 3D. Um, yeah, you can do that with, um, with regular seed beads, but super duos just make it almost um, intuitive. And then um, you want to pick up an eight, go through the next one, another eight, and then the four tens. <laughs> Crossing over and going through the top hole of that next super duo bead. There you go. Picking up an eight and going through top. Another eight through the top. Four more tens. And as I'm working, I'm thinking of, oh, what else could, what else could we do with this? There's, there's a lot of possibility here. Um, when you guys start making your bracelet, you'll have other ideas of, you know, things you can try. I say always try them because that's how you come up with the stuff. It all comes from just trying some idea that you had, and some of them work, and some of them don't. And you just take it apart and try something else. And so see how mine's, are, mine's spinning over here? They're not in the same direction. No biggie, I'm just flip it back. I'm 
And another thought I was having is, would this will work on a round bead? I think it would. I think it would work on a round bead. I would play with the counts. But this whole idea of just, um, you know, encircling a bead of super duos and then crossing over like this is, it's versatile and it can be adapted to, I think, any bead size really. Okay, I'm almost to the end here. It's really pretty. I like it. All right. Okay, so I'm at the last set. I'm picking up my last set of eights. And when you get to this part, you'll remember we were talking earlier about how we're going to reinforce the connection with the wire guardian here. But we need a way to get there. So right now I'm exiting from the top hole of the last super duo bead. But I want to go through this eight and get around the wire guardian here. And I don't want to just turn and go, you'd see the thread and it would actually kind of shift the position of the fans and it would look kind of wonky. So I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn and go through the bottom hole of that last super duo we added. So that's, we came out of the top hole here, we're turning in the other direction and going through the bottom hole there. Pull through. I'm going to do the same thing going through that next bottom hole. And it's getting tighter now, so um, I have to go through the beads one at a time. It won't let me just go straight through them. I'm going through the bottom hole of the last super duo now. There you go. Okay, so now I can turn. Now I'm going to go up through the rondo. I'm exiting from the bottom hole here of the super duo, and I'm just going through the rondo, through the size eight. I'm going to go ahead and pull through that. And now I'm going to go through the 10. It doesn't matter which side. You just pick whichever side, you know, works for you. And if it's tight here, pulling through the wire guardian, it'll get tighter every time you pull through. And no sweat, just get some chain of pliers, hold your needle and just gently pull it. And it'll come up there. Okay, so going around the well, and down through the wire guardian and the 10. If you can get through the eight as well, go for it. Mine's a little tight, so it, I think I'm gonna go one at a time through the beads here. And again, I'm gonna use my pliers. There we go. Now I'm gonna go through the eight. And at this point, you can weave in, reinforce, fix loose spots, um, whatever you'd like to do. Um, you can also weave back up one more time and reinforce that again. And so the way I would do that is, uh, I kind of just randomly went down through three beads here, but I want to make a turn and come back up. So I'll just go through these three here. I'm going through the bottom hole and I have flipped this over. So I'm working at the back and um, let's see here. Yeah, and I'm just going to turn and go up. And so at this point, it's just style. Where would you like to weave in your thread? Do you want to reinforce it again? This thread is so strong that reinforcing it, um, two passes through this wire guardian, I have never had any problems with it loosening. It's always been fine for me. But if you wanted to make one more pass, you could do that here. And so we don't want to forget about the bottom. You got to do the same thing down there. So I'm going to get another needle. I'm going to thread that needle. If it will let me. There we go. All right. And so this was the tail thread we had at the beginning. It originally had a stop bead on it. We pulled the stop bead off and then we just kind of pushed it aside and we worked with the working thread to finish the next steps. So I left it hanging. What I'm going to do is go through the eight and then around the wire guardian with it. And that, I got through that at one pass, that's pretty good. 
the thread it will hook on the work a little bit. Sometimes that happens. You just have to loosen it. Okay, so I'm through the 10 and I'm through the first side of the wire guardian. I'm going around the well here. Down through the 10. I'm going to pull. Go through the eight and kind of the same thing here. Now we're, we are in a choice of, do we want to weave in again? Or go through the wire guardian again. So that's pretty much it. So from here, um, we were doing great on time. A couple things we could do. I could start over. Um, I could share some tips and tricks for um, modifying this design. Um, or maybe talk a little bit more about weaving in. That might make more sense. So they didn't really show that very much. So we've got the time for it. Um, weaving in is kind of its style. So a lot of people will go and tie a knot. I don't like to tie knots because um, it makes it harder for me to do repair later. I feel like sometimes it actually um, can show a little bit and it shifts the um, the tension, you know, it's very uniform. This is very beautiful. It's flowy. And when you start to knot, you get a different tension in different places. Um, completely, you know, in the noise as far as like what people will actually notice when they're looking at your piece, only you're going to notice. So if you want to knot, go for it. Um, knot over another strand that's going in a different direction. It's usually what I do, but um, this is a cool design because it's got so many places you can go. So weaving in is my craft. That's what I do. Takes a long time, um, but it's, it also gives you a chance to tighten things. So I kind of just randomly exited from one of those beads there. It's Rondell. I'm just going to weave around. I'm going to go through these super duos. And they call it following your thread path. And you'll see that in meeting magazines and um, other tutorials where they're just kind of repeating where the thread already is traveling. So see, I just turned, went through the top hole of that other one. Changes in direction. Every time you change direction with your thread, you're tightening it up and you're, it's not going to come undone. It'll stay put. And three or four times is all you need. So I'm turning again, going to the bottom. And I keep going. One other thought that I wanted to share is um, Super Duo is just in general, this project, it, it's just so easy. You don't need to worry about it. But if you're doing a project that really did require lots of different passes through the same hole of a Super Duo bead and where they're all kind of knitted together, switch to a 12. So today we're using 10s, but they also make them in 12. A 12 will get you through those Super Duos, no problem. It's a little harder to thread, but I think it's worth it. So I'm going to trim that because I've, I changed direction four times and I think that's really good. So there we go. And you know, I'm going to do the same thing with this side and then adding clasps. So this is where you can just get creative. Um, I was thinking how cute would it be to throw a little, throw a little charm on the end. And I would grab, I would grab a lobster claw. And then we'll, I'll just show you guys making a chain really quick. Why don't I do that on a finished piece? Let me bring one of my finished pieces over. Let's go with this one. Okay, I left the bindings off this one on purpose because I wanted to show some cool, some cool things you can do to stylize it. And so the dimensions on this one are for um, a six and a quarter wrist. So a it's a little on the small side, but if you were gonna sell it at a market, you could add another inch of chain and it would be adjustable up to eight inches. By the time you add a lobster claw and all of those things. So what I'm doing here is just opening, laterally opening adding a jump ring. I'm going to keep going. And so you guys get the idea. You can just keep adding. And 
tell what you have, what looks like a chain. Or if you have some cute chain, just cut a length of it, a length of it that you think looks good. And I'm going to add the lobster claw on this side. Just that. I like that click. It means that I did a good job making that tight. And then I was thinking, how cool would it be to have a charm on this? And I'm going to grab one of these. I don't know. Pink. Maybe I'll switch it up. Let me go with these. Yeah. There it is. Okay. I'll post this at the end so you guys can see the colors on this charm. They're very gorgeous. Okay, I like to have my charms on the side of the chain. So not on the side where your clasp is going to be, but on the decorative. I decorate the end, it's got less weight. Um, the lobster cross side would have a little more weight. And it also helps people put on the bracelet. So if someone wants to try it on, um, the charm gives it weight and makes it fall. So you can get you can get your clasp there and it's, it's got weight holding it. See, if it didn't have that, it might not be as easy to put on. But so just a thought for if you were going to market these and you know, make lots of them and have them out on a bar at like a, when, whenever we're allowed to have our, you know, summer fairs again and markets. Um, these look gorgeous on a jewelry bar. Mine just has a bunch of them. So um, I was wondering if I had one handy here. I, I looked and I have a few floating around, but the bars, what they do is they display bracelets on a long row and you guys have seen them. Those are really handy. And um, in bulk, you can get pro packs of these cute bags. And it's that earthy feeling to it. I just thought that was kind of a neat idea. Um, another thing that, because I, I own a store, um, an Etsy store, and I do sell my finished work. What I do when I ship my pieces is I box them. And I do that so that they're protected in the mail. These are available in pro packs too. They're come in different colors and sizes. Here's the bracelet version of a nice pack of bracelet boxes. So you can picture your, your gorgeous bracelet in there shipping to your customer. So just some ideas um, that are kind of cool. And so um, I wanted to add, add another little tip of something that I um, actually did not think of this on my own. One of my customers asked me, can this be an earring? Like, yes, this can be an earring. This will make a great earring. So what you could do is make one about this length, put an ear wire on it, and then add a little charm to the bottom. And then if you really want to take it up a notch, you can make your own earring cards and hang them on your own earring cards. Um, I didn't have an earring ready to show, but I had another pair. It's going to show that you can buy cardstock and put your earrings on those. And so how I made that is I used kind of like a slider tool and I cut it from cardstock. You get a lot of them. And it can also be a great way to display your work on a table. Good way to ship it. You also have these punches. Um, if you, especially if you're using something with a lever back, this is handy because you can punch the card, hook your lever back onto it, and then they're not going to fall off the card. So those are more ideas that you guys can try. And so then, um, Carmi, I was hoping to check in with you. We've got 20 minutes and I'm wondering, should I start over or should I show the other, the other idea? Yes. Um, Danielle, the, I think the most important thing that people will have a little bit of a harder time doing this time is how do they really stabilize, um, the beads so that they're not too wobbly. So, if you would just demonstrate how you tightened um, between the super duos and the tenos again, um, that would be helpful because they're definitely remembering from the other class, you, you just, um, you definitely stabilized the raspberry bracelet. 
Oh yeah. So did you mean um, when we were first constructing it, we're adding these little loops? Yes. Top. Okay. So I'm gonna get grab another. Um, let me grab another thing of thread here. I'm just gonna cut a little a little short piece real quick. Okay. So again, I'm just gonna thread this needle really quick. All right, and so um, yeah, it's good to cover this again in case you didn't um, get the um, the tip to write this extra note in your handout. Um, it doesn't say to add a stop bead because when I was first working on this, I just really quickly went through it and came back through, and I wasn't super stressed about it falling off the end. But when I worked on a longer piece, because I did make a necklace hint, I made a necklace. I found that it was just really going all over the place. So. I thought I'll suggest adding a stop bead in class today. And you might wanna add that to your handout as just an extra little tip. Um, and again, length. Uh, length cutting 60 inches is about the minimum I do if you're gonna make a bracelet like this one with 24 rondelles in six millimeter size. Um, but more is okay, cut more thread. And just um, when you get to this part where we thread the needle, just bring it down more than seven inches so it's easier to work with. So you won't have to add thread. This design, adding thread, um, you would do it the same way we wove in, but you shouldn't need to add thread if you cut at least 16 inches or more. Um, maybe cut 75, just to be sure. And the instructions say to leave a 15 inch tail. That should be plenty for weaving in later. And then you'll pick up a rondelle bead, an eight rondelle and an eight. And just keep going until you have uh, 24 or your desired length of them on the uh, on the strand. And then when you get to the side, you'll pick up an eight and a ten, and you'll need another wire for the end. So I have a ten. I'm going through the wire guardian. Going to round the other side. They call this part of the wire guardian over here the well. I just learned that. So it was new to me picking up a 10. And after you pick up the second 10, go through the eight. And then go through the rondelle bead that's next. So I went through the wire guardian, picked up a new 10, went through the eight and the rondelle bead, and I'm pulling tight now. And so um I'm not going to reinforce this yet. Uh, we did that at the end when we, because we're stitching down and then coming all the way back up. So we get another chance to weave around and reinforce that. So for now, I skipped it. But here's the part um, that you guys were asking about before. So each step in this bracelet, we're adding three super duos around the rondelle bead. So we pick up three, go around the rondelle, and as you're doing this, you will notice that it may loosen on you as you're working. I'm going to the next eight, I'm going through the next rondelle. There's lots of opportunities to tighten it, but it's funner to work with a piece that's holding together and isn't moving all over the place and wobbling. So one trick I came up with when I was working on the necklace length, where that started to become really noticeable, um, you may not notice on the bracelet, but on, on the necklace length, I needed it to stabilize more while I was working just this step, just that step where I'm adding super duos. So what I did is every three rondelles or so, I went back through a set more than one pass. So let's see, I just added that one. I'm gonna go through it again. And that'll just serve to lock it up a little bit so that it's not moving when I'm trying to add my next set and the next set after that, it's not getting too loose. And you don't have to sit there and tighten it every time you add. See, now that one's gonna stay really tight because I went through it two times. And uh, I know that's super duo, let's get some more. Three more. Go through here. And so I went through just one rondelle here. I'm going to go through the next eight. 
next round I'll be. Hold tight. You'll notice as you know, as I'm working, I don't even think about it. I just kind of I am tightening, instinctively tightening as I go, which is why I didn't really notice the loose issue the first time I made these. I didn't really notice until I was making a really long one. And then I was like, hmm, it really does help to stabilize it. So I'll show that one more time. We'll get to this last one. So here's my last one. I'm exiting through that last rondel bead. I'm going to get the stop bead out of the way, just pulling that off. Picking up three more. I'm going around through that bead. And now I'm going to do that same trick again. I'm going to go through all these beads again, make it tighter, especially since that's the last one in my row or in my strand. Back through the rondo. And now I need to end this side. So an eight, a 10, and then through the wire guardian. And again, if you're not using wire guardians, pick up. Um, maybe six of your size 10 seed beads and make that into a loop. You can throw a jump ring on that afterward. Pick up another 10. If you've just gone through the wire guardian, just pick up one more 10. And I'll go through the eight and down through that first rondelle. So this is the super short version, but this is gonna be a cute earring. And now what you're gonna to wanna to do is again, you're gonna to have to go through all of the bottom holes of the super duo again. And so we just did that once. I'm doing it a, a third time. Go through there. Okay. And now we're making a turn. So we went through the bottom hole of the super duo. We'll turn, go through the top. And pick up one, size eight beat. Go through the top of the next super duo. And then another size eight, I've just picked up another size eight and going through the top hole of the next. And so this is the part where we're gonna lock these in place. So I'm picking up four size tens. If you're using 11s, try five. If your beads are bigger than this, try more. Um, but I'm using four size tens. And I'm going through the top hole of the super duo on the other side, that's on, over that next rondelle down from the one I was just circling and pull tight. And I'm going to add an eight, go to the top hole of the next one. And when I do this step, that's when you're going to start to see the work kind of shape and pop up. So the next four tens are here, picking those up, crossing over the work, going through that top hole of that bead. And there we go. So what you guys think of that if it's did that answer the question um of kind of what happens when you add this little row of tens it really stabilizes for example this side will move until i do this see i can kind of fold those up but once you've done this step they're always going to stay on one side and then the other side and the other side danielle people will have to just experiment with a little bit and I know I'm going to try it. And yeah. I'm pretty sure mine will be a little bit loose when I start, but as I go through, it'll get stronger and stronger. Yeah, that's exactly right. It'll, it'll get tighter as you work. And it's just kind of one of those projects where as you're working it, every stitch adds another stable section. I mean, because if you look at these, they're pretty tight and you can on the back side you can see the thread showing. So stick with it. That would be my advice is um, in the beginning and that's true for all bead weaving stitches is just um, just stick with give it you know give it till the end of the row, give it to the next row. And if I gave up on this design in the early stages it wouldn't it, I would have never known how cool it was because I would have thought oh it doesn't work. But it actually really does. It just, you got to get to that last step. 
So I'd recommend sticking with it. All right, um, let's see. So 350. I could show, hmm, we have a little extra time. I'm not used to having extra time. So I'm like, hmm, what can I do? Um, That's okay. Now you have an opportunity to show them what happened after you made the bracelet. Yes, okay, yes. <laughs> I'm excited. So this was just today, and I was just playing. And um, I came up with a necklace design. Let me get all this stuff on here first. I wanted to see what would happen if I made a necklace. And, and in truth, this started as a necklace and it was only going to be a necklace. It wasn't going to have the extra stuff. Um, I think my other background is better. I'm going to switch sides. Okay. There we go. I was just going to make nine inches of this and then put a pretty chain on it. And I thought that alone would be an amazing necklace. And then I saw these abalone shells in my stash. I got these on the Michaels wall. Um, or shell leaves. Can't miss them. They're like the brightest thing out there. So you, when you're walking down the hall aisle, you'll see them. And I, I'll um, I'll probably post all the I'll post all these part numbers later, so you guys can find that. But all I did is I made a bracelet link here, and then I went through the shells and uh, came back on the second pass and stabilized them. With just a little loop at the back. I don't know if you guys can see the loop, but I'm gonna get closer. There we go. It's it's a dark color. It's very beautiful, um, like a black diamond. But you can see I did a little loop here just to make it tighter. But all this was was just me, me and Super Duos just playing. And um, you you'll be so surprised when you start working if you just let yourself um, just try the crazy ideas. And you never know if you'll get something that you really like. This one I think is just very cool and it's different and it's statement. It's very vacation. There are other colors of these. Um, these are an abalone that's kind of got an iridescent gray to it. I really like grays and earth tones, but they also have a, a bright green. I think I saw a pink one, like a pink shell color. So yeah, and then the chain, all I did is just, I went up through a wire guardian here, came back down. That's all I did, super easy. The rest of it is exactly what we did here today in class. And you get a necklace. And so um, I want to just uh, highlight the beads I used again in case you're thinking about next week, like I am. So the strand we used today was the six millimeter. And I'm going to get higher here. Sorry, guys. That's a little better. Okay, so the strand we used today was, came on a set of four. And I pulled the six millimeter off and that's what we made the samples with. Uh, I was using, I was using red today, but it's, there's, there's a lot of colors, loads of colors. So you can choose any you like. Next week, we're gonna need this strand. This is the strand that has the little four millimeter ones. And it goes around a wooden bead. These are the wooden beads I used. Originally, there were two strands on here. I, I removed one. It's a 10 millimeter, kind of metallic -y finished wooden bead. And we're going to brick stitch around it with size eights. And then do you see those little crystals? That is these in a different color. It's in a pink color. Um, it's, it's not a great color for the camera, but it, it's like a little pink four millimeter crystal. Comes from one of these strands in pink. So I recommend picking up one of those. The rest of them are seed beads, eights and elevens. So that's what we'll do. We'll do that next week. Now it's gonna be really fun, really versatile technique that I think you guys will enjoy. And then while you've got this strand, you've used these two, you still got these. Sarah Ellis has a class that's coming up and she's using these, these exact ones. This is the Aurora Borealis. And she's got these on her, um, the knotted beading wire. I'm gonna be in that class. That one, I love that, it looks really cool. And so yeah, that's called glass faceted gray black. And I believe we're dropping the link for all these rondelles in the, in the chat. You were talking about that um, as something that you guys might wanna see. So let's see, I'm gonna switch back to my other camera here. 
And I'm gonna move this down. Hi. And I'm gonna show the necklace off because it's awesome. And I'll, I'll share all these colors online. I'll put a little post up. And I might try to do a little diagram so everybody can see. Just, um, but really all I did was I just went through them. And then on the back pass, I went outside of them with an extra row for stabilizing. And that's it. That's all I did. Next week, we're doing earrings. These little brick stitch beauties. And then the week after that, we're going to do these pearl cuffs. They're magnetic. Really fun. And um, last but not least, another earring die. We're going to do these um, herringbone stitch earrings. Kind of flare out a little bit. Really cute. So I think, I think this will be a really fun class. I'm looking forward to this one. And so that's all. That's all I've got for today. And um, I'm really glad to see you guys. I'm happy, happy new year to everybody. And uh, it's, it's great to be back. And oh, hi, Seema. <laughs> and I see Doris. Hi, Doris. So you guys have a great evening. Enjoy your Friday. And thanks again.